So, my Husqvarna 125B is leaking fuel. I don't know if you can see it. It's all wet in there. So, it's just all dripping down. Let me show you where it was sitting. So, I keep it on the table over here. There you go. You see it wet itself. So, I definitely have a fuel leak. Let's find out uh, where it is. Okay, first of all, let me tell you what the symptoms were because I didn't find a fuel leak until just now. I already tried... I already made one attempt to fix it, which failed, of course, because it's leaking fuel. <clears throat> so I would uh, throw the choke, uh, pull it, it would pop. I'd put the choke to uh, the middle position as instructed and pull it, and it would run. It would start to warm up. I'd go to run, choke off, and it would be just fine. And it would run and run, and then all of a sudden it would start to bogged down and cut off. So it did that two or three times. I was able to get some uh, things done with it, uh, but you know, I, th I thought it was gone. I thought the uh, piston and cylinder had worn through, you know, I've had it for years. And uh, so I was going to look at it, see what was wrong. And then so I thought it was the vent and I went in here and took all these uh, pieces out. There's two pieces. There's the cord piece which I've long gotten rid of and there's a little uh, check valve if you were. What it is is it's just a piece of rubber that's squeezed together and it'll let air in but it'll collapse if it tries to, you know, it's, it's normally closed so if fuel splashes up in there nothing's going to go through but when it needs air it sucks it out through. You know, it's just a little collapsed V thing, and it'll open up to let air in and close up. I thought the uh, hole was plugged. There was like this brass screen in there. I drilled that out because I couldn't uh, uh, suck on it either way. <laughs> couldn't get air to go through one way or another. Uh, now I know why, but uh, it'll it'll go through now. But it wouldn't go through, so I thought that was a problem. And then I went to uh, start it up and running thinking I fixed it and it wouldn't even come off a choke. I mean, I couldn't even get it off a full choke. As soon as I, as soon as I go to half choke, it, it stops. So that's when I discovered the fuel leak, the puddle over there where I kept it on the stand. And so now I'm going to inspect all the lines and see if I can find something wrong. So first thing off is the air cover here, and the question is why isn't it coming right off? There we go. So that's the first thing. Got some bugs and leaves and stuff in there. Alright, the next I'm going to take off the side cover. The side cover is uh, for what I call metal screws. All the screws are made of metal but they're um, threaded in a way that uh, these four screws go into metal and these three screws go into plastic. These three screws go into plastic. So let me get those out. All right, I know I said they were Torx. They're not Torx, they're, uh, you know, um, socket heads. So they're socket head screws. And this is a four, so four millimeter fits right in there. Get my little wrench on here. My other tools are in the basement. All right, so I'm going to take the uh, side cover off, see where we're at. So this is what I mean by plastic and metal screws. The screws themselves are made of metal, but this one goes into plastic. Let me go over here to the white area, <laughs> see how the thread is. And then this one goes into metal, see it's like a fine thread. So that's how you can tell them apart. There's four metal ones and three plastic ones. So let me keep going. So I'm gonna get all these four screws to take off the recoil starter. And I'll take out the three screws here and it should separate right off. All right, you want I want to zoom in here because even though I've drained the gas, you can see 
it's still you know has some residual leaking here so let me take my cover off all right we'll take the cover off and I'll lean it back a little bit because uh, I didn't want all of this to fall off the carburetor is loose here and this has a tendency to fall out so let me huh, and fall off <laughs> So there we go. Let me uh, start getting at it here. Take off my Z bend here from the carburetor. That should free up the carburetor if I can get it off. And that should allow me to inspect all my fuel lines and see where that leak is. All right, I have two screws holding on the tank one at the top and one at the bottom. I'm going to pull those off so I can get the tank off and then the carburetor and the whole fuel system be off on the bench. I can uh, hunt down that leak. Alright, I don't want to take the whole motor off but in order to get to this one tank screw here I needed to get a uh, four millimeter hex key that was rounded, had a ball on the end of it because I needed to go at an angle. You can't go straight in because this this guy is in the way so you can't go straight in you need to get to a little angle up or down or something so that's uh, extra tool you need and both the top and bottom screws the metal screws are threaded to go into the plastic okay the fuel system should be free let's see if it is yeah, still fighting it. Let me find out what's going on. So it looks like it's just a tight fit. I need to just wiggle and jiggle and otherwise pull it out if I want to remove the tank, which I do. Because I'm having a fuel problem. And here we are. Now, I can see right away there's only one line there. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Looks like it came undone or something. We'll see. Okay, well I can tell you right now that's the problem right here. This line has broken. So it broke right here at the connection which is normally what I see on weed eaters. Now on the string trimmers the two cycle string trimmers I used to fix those all the time because they failed right here like this uh, leaf blower failed and usually it's just a small crack and you can't even see it sometimes it would run sometimes it wouldn't it's really kind of weird <laughs> so anyway uh, you just have to watch these fuel lines they become stiff over time and then they just break right off and then you have air getting in there instead of fuel and it can't run on air for some reason it needs fuel and so it won't run so now we have to fix it all right as you can see it has a little tab right here but I'm going to use my screwdriver at a more convenient location and as you can see there are two lines and it looks like oh gosh it's the fuel feed line that failed <laughs> <laughs> okay wonderful so oh and that broke too so it must be some cheap Chinese stuff because I did do a video on uh, replacing a carburetor and they gave me new fuel line so I did a video on replacing the carburetor and they did and they gave me new fuel line but it must have not been Tigon tubing it must have just been uh, yellow crap that goes away in a couple of years so I buy Tigon Tooling. Now that's a brand name. And you know, you can just go to McMaster Car. I think you'd probably go on Amazon. There are some places. You don't need to buy a big, huge lot like I do. Uh, especially since I'm getting out of the uh, two-stroke business. As soon as this uh, leaf blower fails, uh, you know, the cylinder wears out, piston and cylinder wear out. I'm not going to replace that or buy a new one. I'm going electric. But in the meantime, 
you can see by my use here, if I can get this thing open, <laughs> you can see how little I have left because <laughs> I use this the most when I was fixing weed eaters and other two stroke equipment. You can see the quarter inch line didn't need too much. And what's this guy? This is uh, 3 16 ID, 5 16 OD. So that comes in pretty handy too. So you can see it here, but I still have quite a bit of that left. So you can see what I use the most of. This guy right here, which is uh, eighth inch ID, quarter inch OD. So, here we go. Let's replace it with quality line instead of this stuff that came with the uh, carburetor here. Cheap crap. All right, now this is the difference between do-it-yourself and shop, in my opinion. Now, it could be just, I could just be anal like this, or I don't know. But anyway, I clean everything up uh, before I put it back together. I get it all nice and clean. You know, I'm not talking original factory virgin clean. But you see where all the gas tank, some dirt and crap got in there. So I'm going to clean all that up. And I'll just get some of the dust off of it. I'll look at the uh, spark arrestor, but I'm going to leave the spark arrestor in there. And you can see I bought this at Lowe's. Um, there's a difference. Um, <laughs> if you buy it from a Husqvarna dealer, it's going to be different than buying it from Lowe's. Because if you buy from Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, big box stores like that, they build it to a price point. Whereas if you go to a Husqvarna dealer, you're getting better hardware, better parts, better... It's, it's just more robust. And that's just the way it is. That's why you go into Walmart, you look at a TV, see some 60-inch sharp TV for, you know, 10 cents. And you go down to the local TV shop, you know, and it's $1,000. And you go, what the heck, I'm going to go to Walmart and get it. Well, that's the reason. They built it to a price point. They used lesser parts. Anyway, I clean up all this plastic and spider webs and dust bunnies and all that stuff and uh, get it back together. All right, that's much cleaner. If you look in the other frames and see uh, what I did or did not do. Um, so I'm going to put in the gas tank. I'm going to reinstall the gas tank. And uh, put these two screws in here, one on the top, one on the bottom. You can see that's cleaner. See the tank is cleaner. And uh, start going from there. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Yeah, it goes in a lot easier than it came out. <laughs> All right, and these were the plastic screws. on there. Fun stuff. Oh yeah. I have to use my <laughs> X key. <laughs> Forgot already from that moment in time to now. All right, and then I didn't tighten it all the way because you see I need to align the other screw. That's a trick I learned a long time ago is you start all your screws first and that way you know it's all aligned because if I would have tightened that down uh, I might have had to loosen it back up to get the bottom screw to align so little trick for you I try and do that one as often as I can um, alright keep on going uh, I guess next is uh, Getting the fuel line. Also, I th I noticed there wasn't a fuel filter in there. I thought this came with a fuel filter. I'm gonna look real quick. Well, I got gaskets. That's an oil cap. That's a lawnmower oil cap. I got plenty of new uh, primers and a bunch of new caps. Tons of those too. Uh, gasket. Plenty of gaskets. So I've got everything, but I just don't see a filter. So. Uh, 
I'm going to look real quick on the uh, website, look at the parts list, see if it came with a filter. If not, it's going back together. Let's see if I can get that to come up on the camera. Tigon F4040A. If you need to replace the primer, whether it's just the uh, bulb or the whole thing, you just squeeze those two little tabs. There's the top tab. There you go. There's a shot. Top and bottom tab. Just get some pliers, squeeze it, and it pops right out. I'll show you. So I'll just get my needle nose pliers here. If I can do it on camera. Easy peasy. Clean this up. Alright, in my other video where I replaced the carburetor, you know, I did the lines <clears throat> one at a time. I, um, you know, would measure one without any dirt on it. You know, I'd measure one and, and just replace it one at a time. And I'll do that for the ones that I have connected. But these are broke. So what are we going to do? Well, it's pretty easy to see the bulb, how that goes. And then uh, the other one comes out of the tank and into the carburetor, so that's that's pretty straightforward. Also, I kind of blew off the bulb in the previous video, but there's a long leg and a short leg. And you want the long leg of the bulb, if I can stay on camera, you want the long leg of the bulb to go to the tank. And that's important because when you press on the bulb, what happens is you draw it through the carburetor so it comes out of the tank in through the carburetor uh, little bits deposited in there and it's sucked out and pumped back into the tank so that's how that works so the short line to the carburetor the long line to the tank now the return line from the bulb you know it doesn't have to go far into the tank it just needs to go into the tank where the line that picks up to go to the carburetor the line that failed which I don't even see it anywhere uh, the other end of this broken line here that needs to go into the tank and uh, sit on the bottom I also look there is no fuel filter at least on mine I don't know if the other ones had fuel filters on them you know the Home Depot one, the Husqvarna dealer one, or, you know, whatever. So, anyway, so we're going to just keep going just like that. So, here's my second line length. And that's from the bulb to the tank. Fit that in there. So it's an extremely tight fit, so in order to get it to work through, I kind of cut it off at a little bit of an angle so that I could feed it through. And then now I'll uh, put it on the bulb here. If I can get it off of here. Of course you can't smell it, but there's gas everywhere. Okay. Now I need to pull the broken line out and get the uh, other line from the carburetor into it. So as you can see as I'm feeding the new line through, there's still some old line there. And I actually picked some out and I was going to replicate that, <laughs> fake it on film. <laughs> uh, but I decided not to and now that I'm feeding the new line through I see that there's still old line left in there so you get to deal with all that now unfortunately I don't know what length it needs to be so I am going to cut it off after I determine how deep to put it into the tank okay it's reassembly time See if I can get this all figured out here. Now that I got it all twisted and turned, and I know this goes in the back. So this is gonna. All right. 
let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's going to go like that. So let's get this in here. Our gasket's already there. I'm just going to reuse it. Oh, that's the fuel line. Fun stuff. Let's see. So I just made a determination on how long it should be. I can always take it out and cut it shorter. And we're going to pop that back in there. Fun stuff, I decided to fish it out just so it's clear. Got my gasket on there. Gonna put my choke back on. All right, let me get it all together. All right, let me show you a little trick. You take your uh, nut here, put it over top of a paper towel, and you put it in your socket, and look at that. It stays right in there, no problem. So now we can uh, get this thing started. All right, so let me show you how my little paper towel trick works here. So we'll just... Uh, Get it in there, get it started, then you can pull your tool out, nuts on, and dig the paper towel out, whatever. Start the other one, paper towel, get it started. Take your tool off. All good. We'll snug it down here as soon as I dig the paper towels out. All right, we're all snug down. Just uh, gluten tight, kind of some finger tight there. Click this guy back in place. It just goes in real easy. Just push it in like that. Easy peasy. All right, spark arrestor looks clean. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to take it out. I'll put it back in. All right, we'll get the throttle back on. We'll get this out of the way for right now. We'll do a, get this guy on here. And we'll connect it, where does it go? Right here. Yep, right here. Uh, the kill switch just snaps into place so I don't have to worry about positioning it. Next is getting the cover on. Making sure everything fits up. Let me do that. Get the cover on. Got to tilt it a little bit because I have to get over the spark plug boot. And I need to line everything up. All right, so I'm going to put in the three plastic screws that are made from metal. <laughs> so let me do that. Oh uh, yeah, got to use my socket. So let's do that. Just start it. Remember, it's the coarse threads. And again, this just clicks into place. Abracadabra. Next is the pull starter. It's not symmetrical, so you can't mess it up. It only goes on one way. Don't cross thread. Uh, it's not overly critical, but my tip 
is to start all the screws before tightening anyone down to assure alignment. So we'll get those started and tighten them down. Snug them down. Okay, I'm going to make sure my fuel line is all tucked in. There's no filter on the end of it to keep keep it down, you know, the weight. Alright, I'm going to put my filter in there. Gas. An oil mix and gas cap. Okay, air cleaner. Cleaner cover. All right. Fuel. since I'm making a video let me show you what I did so I just kind of pick this out this really just holds the cord in that I have removed so if you look at it it has that little locking ring on there and then you can see where the cord goes in and then it goes into the tank so that the cap doesn't remove and the same thing it has kind of like that star only a smaller one can you see it only a smaller one right here pick that out and I don't know, let me see how close I can get to the camera but when air comes in it puckers and allows air to come in and then it's normal clothes to prevent fuel from going out so the fact that I drilled out the screen there we go you can see the light in there uh, there was like this brass screen in there but I couldn't blow through it so could air pass I don't know but anyway I drilled it out so that's gone and then I'll just uh, put it back together and put it on air check valve in place the uh, cover I'm calling it a cover because I'm not using it to retain the cap put that in place all right put the cap on put the blower funnel on the front here let's see if it starts okay so I'm not going to fake it I'm going to take it outside and uh, see if it starts all right the only thing is I apologize I did not show you the symptoms but basically it would start up and run and then cut off that was it so everything was fine so I don't have any carburetor issues just fuel delivery so I got the full choke on probably gonna stand right in the way of the camera oh, maybe I should prime it Final comment, um, I had to cut off, gosh, looks like an inch and a half, almost two inches of line so it sat in there correctly. So just make sure your fuel line sits in there correctly. Uh, otherwise, you have to keep it completely full. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So uh, make sure your f fuel f line, your carburetor feed line, is sitting down in the back on the bottom. All right, thank you for watching.